and please join us as you are there. We're going to go ahead and get started with our service on this morning. God, we just love you. We thank you and we praise your name, God. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us to us on this evening. We thank you for waking us up, allowing us to see this beautiful Sunday morning, God. We thank you for giving us our breath. God, we also see that we are both here on the way to not just this service, God, but whichever church you wish to be the only church on, have your way in this place as we go to talk and have your word, God. Be with the one who will lead us and guide you and God and be a blessing to our church on this evening, God. So have your way, God. And we just love you so much. We just praise your name because you are worthy. You are so worthy to be praised. And Holy Spirit of God, as we welcome you here in this place, bless all these things. Bless them in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. So greetings to you this morning from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet water. He restores my soul. He guides me along on the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me footsteps in my footsteps you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever may God add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his word and now we're going to have our praise and worship as they come and lead us Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. This morning, we're going to lift our voices up unto the Lord and give him some praise and worship. As a matter of fact, let's just put our hands together and give God some praise. Amen, amen, amen. God has been good. Um, down through the years, God has been good to me. How many have know that to be their testimony this morning? Amen. Help me sing it. Down through the years, oh, God has been good to me. Everybody help me sing. Down through the years, God has been good to me. Oh, down through the years, God has been good to me. He's really been good. Really been good, good to me. Everybody clap your hands and say, down through the years, yeah. Down through the years. Oh, oh, God has been good to me. Oh, down through the years. God has been good to me. to me. He's really been good, really been good, good to me. Oh, 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 all of my life, all of my life, oh, oh God has been good to me. Oh, all of my life, God has been good to me all of my life. God has been good to me. It's really been good, really been good, good to me all of my life. Yes, all of my life. God has been. God has been good to me all of my all of my life. God has been good to me oh all of my life. Oh, God has been good to me. He's really been good. Really 
living good, good to me. My mind is made up. Oh, yes, I'm on my way up. Oh, yes, gonna hold my head up. Yes, go on with the Lord. Help me, everybody, sing. My mind is made up. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm on my way up. Yes, I'm gonna hold my head up. I'm going, going on with the Lord. 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 Come on, if that's your testimony, let's bless him this morning. You deserve the glory mm -hmm. and the honor as we lift our hands in worship, as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. Oh, and the honor mm -hmm. as we lift our hands in worship, as we praise your whole holy for you, for you are great. You do miracles. So great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve, you deserve the glory and the honor. Mm -hmm. And the honor as we lift our hands, as we lift our hands in worship, as we praise your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor and the as we as we lift our hands in worship as we praise your whole for you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no like you there is no one for you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you Bless him, bless him, bless him. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise your name, God. It is now time for a prayer request. If you have a request, go ahead and make that request known. Sister Cheryl.
Amen. That was Charlotte Norwood. Let's continue to remember her. She had to be taken back to the hospital. Um, I'm a Brian Smith. Let's continue to remember him. Brother McLaughlin, remember him. Amen. Is that Aaron back there? You're having sur surgery on Thursday? Amen. Yes, we will. we will remember you in prayer. Amen. Are there any other outspoken requests? Sister Margarita? Okay, the Cole family. Now, is that your nephew? Okay. Her nephew, or the Cole family, the whole family. Amen. Let's continue to remember um, Brother Lyle. Don't see him again. Let's continue to remember Maria. Amen. Are there any other outspoken? Shirley Collins. Amen. We'll continue to remember her. Yes, yeah, Sister Fran. Gary Nash and Gail Jenkins. Amen. Any other outspoken requests? Let's continue to remember uh, Sister Bonnie Vickers. I did speak with her the other day. She's doing much better. Um, let's continue to remember Pastor Janelle Robinson. Um, she had a surgery the other day, uh, which was actually on her heart. She's doing pretty good, but let's continue to remember her as um, she continues to go through the healing process. Amen. Let's continue to remember Sister uh, Cassandra Case. Um, her son, uh, Nathan, her daughter, Lee, and her grandchildren. Amen. Any other outspoken? Don't want to miss anyone. All right. If there are any other, um, unspoken, go ahead and lift your hand. God sees and he knows. Amen. Amen. Good to see Brother Ted and Sister Reva back. They were away from us all last week. Good to see them on this morning. Amen. Sister Linda is going to come to us with a prayer song, and then, Pastor, you take these two. Oh, amen. Do it now. Do it now. In the name of Jesus. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. right now touch right now touch right now in the name of jesus touch right now touch touch right now touch right now Jesus, touch, do it now, do it now, do it now, in the name of Jesus, do it now, do it, do it now. Jesus, do it now. Lord, we thank you. And as the songwriter said, there's an urgent request that needs to be done now. We've been waiting. We've been waiting. But God, it needs to be done right now. So God, all of those blessings that we already request and that you know about, can we put that now there, Lord? Will you bless them right now? Will you go by the bedside to those who are in the hospital and bless them? Those who come through therapy, Lord. Those who come through uh, not having enough money 
to meet that is the end of the month. Bless them now. And we thank you for that now, Lord, that we can call upon a God and go before the throne of grace and say, Lord, I need a blessing now. I need a blessing yesterday. I need a blessing right now. Bless our church, Lord. Bless us with this merger, God. As we go forth, we ask that you would just continue to bless us and be with us in a special way. Bless every household, Lord. Bless every household. Bless our children, Lord. Don't let them be a detriment to us, Lord, but be a blessing. Lord, we just ask that you would continue to be with us in a special kind of a way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you've been so good to us in the midst of all that has happened, Lord. You've kept food on our table. You've kept a roof over our head. And then not only that, we're still in our right mind. So God, if there's another blessing, we ask that you would come now. And our request is today, do it, do it now. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we are going to get ready to take of communion. It's communion Sunday. So pastor, if you can go ahead and come before us. God is so good, and he's blessed us over and over and over again, and we thank him for that. And the Bible said that on the same night that Jesus was betrayed, amen, that he took, he took a cup and he said, I mean, he took bread and he broke it, and he said, break and eat. Take this and do this. In remembrance of me. And then he took, took a cup, and when he stopped saying that this cup, the New Testament in my blood. And as often as you eat up this bread and drink up this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Father, thank you. We thank you, first of all, that you gave your blood for every last one of us. And that you died on Calvary, that we might have life, and that we might have, have it more abundant. Bless us, Lord, in a special way. We thank you for all that you've done, even in the month uh, before now, how you have blessed us and brought us through thus far. Bless us now as we go, Lord, and continue to be with us, Lord, as we struggle through this life, knowing one thing that the Apostle Paul said, that if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? We thank you, Lord. Bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, for this bread. And, be, and for this blood, in Jesus' name, amen. What can wash away my sin? God of Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
grave for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God, because he sent his son down to die for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. All right, now we are going to prepare to hear the word. Amen. We are going to prepare to hear that which God has given to Pastor David Lund, the shepherd of this house. Amen. And I ask that you would just sit with your, your ears open, your heart, your minds open, and say a little prayer before he comes to us. But before that, Sister Linda is going to come to us with a special selection. Pray for her. Sometimes you just have to sing a love song unto the Lord. And, um, in those quiet moments, uh, I was kind of sick this week and I had a time to uh, spend a little time with the Lord and just love on him and let him love on me. And so I thought about this song and I wanted to sing this song just maybe for someone who may be uh, thinking about something or whatever you may be think, uh, going through. Just know that God does love you and that you need to reciprocate that back to him as well. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to you, Lord. Oh, in moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song. To Jesus, oh, in moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to you, Lord, singing, I love you, Lord, singing, I love you, Lord, singing, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, singing, I love you, Lord, oh, singing, I love you, Lord, singing, I love you. love you, Lord. Sing it with me. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to you, Lord. In moments, in moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song. To Jesus, oh, in moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to you, Lord. Let's sing it one more time. In moments, in moments 
like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. Oh, in moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to you, Lord. Singing. I love you, Lord. Oh, singing. I love you, Lord. Singing. I love you, Lord. I Love you, Lord, singing, singing. I love you, Lord, singing, singing. I love you, Lord, singing. Him. God, we love you this morning. We praise and magnify your name, oh God. We bless your name, oh God. We love you, God. We love you. Amen. God is a good God, isn't he? He can do everything except fail. He's not going to fail. Amen. Every bit of his word is true. If God has given you a promise, he's going to stand by that promise. Father, we thank you once again. It's another February. It's a black history month. Amen. It's a month that we can definitely identify with, especially those who are 75, 85, 70, 90, 100 years old. We know about Jim Crowism. We know about what sharecropping is all about. We know about living in the Jim Crow South. But now you have made a difference in our lives, and we thank you. We ask that you would bless us now and be with us in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How many of y'all believe in showing partiality? Amen. We're going to talk about that. You got to be careful about that. You really do. James, the second chapter, says this. And it's a warning against partiality. Amen. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of person. For if there come into your, into your assembly a man with a gold ring, godly appearance, there come in also a poor man, a man in vile raiment. Are ye, uh, and ye have respect to him that weareth gay clothing. And say unto him, sit here, a man, into, the, into a good place. And you say to the poor man, stand thou there, or sit here under are you not then partial in yourselves? And are you become judges of evil thoughts? Talking to my brother, he said, it says, you got to be real careful. That is about partiality. partiality. And that's what we want to talk about, showing partiality. How many of y'all have ever shown partiality? Don't raise your hand and say that you have. Uh, don't sit there and not raise your hand. Oh, you've done it one day, one day or another one time. Now, on last week, we talked about how to act in church. 
Amen. And this week, we want to talk about the people, how to treat the people who comes in the assembly to understand. You know, church can get too re relational. You can become so relational until you only recognize those you know, those you love, those you claim you have in your portfolio. And you have to be careful about that. Amen. But this week, uh, uh, we want to talk about how to treat folks who come into the assembly and folks who are already in the assembly. And the great question is, are you being fair with everybody? Now, the devil don't, don't play fair. Am I right? Now, in the ancient Greek, amen, it was said that uh, this letter, James, was originally re written in Greek to understand. Assembly, the word assembly here. It means synagogue, amen. James called a Christian, call it a Christian meeting, a synagogue. It was a shul. It was a temple, amen. Now, when the Christians met, there was nothing marking the difference between who was higher or who was lower, you understand? Who had money, who didn't have money, amen. Those who were rich and those who were poor. Now, in, 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 in the... In Romans, in the Roman world, believe it or not, people were wearing rings and gold, amen, in that day and time, and just to show that they had money. Somebody always say, man, I'm glad it didn't come from the rappers then. Folk been wearing gold all their life. And it was to show that they had, believe it or not, some money. So that didn't come, amen, from the low income part of town. Amen. They show, uh, they had places whereby you could go and rent rain to pretend and to show that you were well off. Amen. You see, there were shops in the, ancient, in the ancient Rome that whereby you could go and rent some gold or some silver, whatnot, to impress people to understand. And there was an impression there that you were richer than they actually thought you were. A young lady said, and I never shall forget this. It was, this was many, many years ago. And she says that, um, you know, whenever the winter time comes, uh, every now and then if I want to basically go to a red carpet affair or after five affair, I'll just borrow me a mink coat from my friend because I want to show, uh, I want to impress somebody, amen, that a mink coat says that I have some money. Amen. But guess what I found out? You don't impress anybody by trying to impress anybody. So you got to be careful about that. Now, now, in, 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 the, in the theater, in the, uh, how can I say it, the archives of your mind, the theater of your mind, the smokehouse of your mind, you understand. Imagine a very rich man coming in to your assembly. Amen. The rich man. Amen. Displaying and showing that he had wealth because he had on gold rings. In that day, the gold rings would go on the left hand. It wasn't a wedding ring. It was to show that he had, that he had money. Amen, you see. And many believe, this day and time, believe it or not, you see, that there's certain social, how can I say, cultural groups that are superior to others because they have money. I wouldn't worry about the money. I would ask them, do you have Christ in your life? Because in the confounds of living, you would need Jesus Christ. That is in your life. To understand. You see, uh, so what we got to do is not think about the money all the time. Proverb writers say, money answereth all things. But it can't save me. It can't heal me. If I'm dying and you're going to throw some money on my bed and say, that's going to take care of it, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Amen. But a lot of people think that that money is just everything, and they believe that as long as I got some money, I'm all right. Amen. My daddy said, why y'all worry about money? You're going to need it all of your life, ain't it, huh? I mean, why are you worried about it? You know, money ain't something you just going get, to get and keep, uh, you know what I mean, and not have to spend it. But somewhere down the line, you're going to have to spend some money. If you don't believe it, ask Donald Trump. Well, anyhow. Anyhow, anyhow, but the thing about it is they felt special because they had gold rings, they had money, amen. And as long as they felt special and different, amen, 
there was, and, and they didn't know that there was nothing new under the sun, what they were doing was really thinking that they were better than other people. You don't want to go there, man. You don't want to go there. Because you riding good and living good and all of that, you better than other people? No, you're not. You know, no, you're not. Some people sit up in the church a long time and think they're better off than others. You ain't going to say amen to that. And so we create new rules, amen, and ideologies, amen, and, 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 and that's predicated on the uh, idea that I'm better than you, and it's a childish thing. Isn't it a childish thing? I can run faster than you. My dog is bigger than your dog. I'm better looking than you. My daddy got more money than you. It's a childish thing that's on the inside of you. Amen. If we had to pay our way to heaven right now, a whole lot of us, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't got no money. You in the bank on everything. So that's just the way it is. Amen. It's a childish thing. Amen. But James said, amen, show no partiality and become judges of evil thought. Amen. You see? And he says, I got two reasons. Amen. You see, two reasons, he said, that you should know. And the first one is, you don't serve a God that's partial. Why don't you be like God? You say you like Christ, but he's not. He's not partial. You understand. You see, I don't serve a partial God. Amen. And to be partial is not to be like God. Am I right? You're not like God. Romans 12 and 1, it says that there is no respect to person with God. Then uh, there is Colossians 3.25 that says that the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality in God. That says you can run, but you can't hide. You can change your name. Amen. But payday is coming one of these days. I think one writer said you reap what you sow. How you going to get around that one? That's a tough one there to get around, isn't it? Well, you know what you sown. You can't sow stuff and then pray for crop failure and tell a lie because it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. I'm very sorry. It will not work. And the more lies you tell, I declare, I believe you blocking your own blessing. I believe you blocking your blessing. Because every time we turn around, you just telling an untruth and it ain't necessary. Amen. Amen. You see, then not only that, but, uh, uh, and, and this is uh, uh, the heart of God. And it should be the heart of man. Amen. If you are a true believer, you ought to be uh, the heart of a believer that says that I don't show partiality. Now, it's kind of hard sometimes, isn't it? Some people even favor one child in their family better than they do the others. Y'all ain't going to say nothing, but you know I'm telling the truth. They favor. They favor one child in their family. You know what I mean? And uh, that's just all it is. You know what I mean? Uh, one, one child said, well, I want to be... A doctor. He ends up being a doctor, started going to school, and the other child said, well, I want to be a truck driver. Why you want to be a truck driver? Why don't you want to be like your brother? That's the way we do people. You need to stop showing partiality, and you need to stop doing your children that way. Amen. You see? So, we should not uh, bring no partiality that is in uh, a bigotry, prejudice, Amen. And uh, being clannish and clicking, you have to be about that. And that's number two, you understand. Partiality, you understand. Being prejudiced, since this is Black History Month, we all have seen a lot of that, you understand. Being prejudiced, lying, speaking evil of your brother uh, and sister is very, very unfair. It's very, very unfair. Amen. Then there's Galatians 3 27 that says, As many of you, amen, as we are baptized in Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free. Amen. There's neither male nor female. I need to study that one a little more. But we are all one in Jesus Christ. Now, isn't that a beauty? It talks about unity. What can you say about being one these days? About really, really being one. Amen. But we're one in Christ. Then you, it says, then you are Abraham's uh, offspring, ears according, that is, to the promise. Amen. And that means that all people 
amen, from all classes and distinctions and all social economic background, amen, in all areas of life, amen. You see, all religious persuasion. It says that once they come to Christ and get sweetly saved and embrace the cross, those distinctions are gone and you all are one. You're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Amen. And that at the cross, we stand shoulder to shoulder. Amen. And hear me, nobody, nobody stands above the other person. Amen. Or individual, uh, that is at the cross. I like to use the word, when we come to Jesus, there's a great equalizer. That means we, means we all are what? One. You were sinners, and now you're saved by grace. Amen. You see, and everybody decide, I mean, deserve, that is to be saved and to be sweetly saved and live their life in Christ. Romans 3.23 Roman 3, said we all have sinned and come short. That is of the glory of God. Now, here in the text, the rich man is marked, or he's marked, uh, how can I say it, as having wealth by wearing rings. Amen. Wearing a lot of rings, having a lot of gold, you understand. Gold back in the day and yea, even now, it means something to people. It means something to people. The raffle, uh, everybody wears gold. Uh, the coaches, what, what's his name is? Coach Pine. All of them got on gold. They love that gold. Y'all can talk what you want. Gold, me, if you go and I see the African king, it's about gold. There's something about gold. I don't know. People just got to have it. It means something. Amen. But the text goes on to say that about the same time the rich man came into the assembly, then there was a poor man. You understand? When the rich man entered, that is the church. Amen. You understand? Of the assembly. Amen. They did their best to take care of them, of him. Matter of fact, they went out of their, their way. Grandma would say they made a fuss over. You understand? Please sit here. Sit here in this big chair. A high chair where it's comfortable. Or do you want any water, cold glass of water? You understand? You see, what about your animal on the outside, the camel, the donkey? Does he need any feed? Does he need any water? You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see? And then we went on. He, they, they just went on and on. Oh, your feet need washing. Can we wash your feet? You understand? We have a fanners if you're hot. Back in the day, they had people just a fan, just fanning. Why do we do that, y'all? And since it's Black History Month, we do need to talk about that. Why does one economical group or one group or one township act like they do just hate one? Why do we show partiality, even in the church? Why do you do it? Why do you do it? Why do you let the spirit sneak upon you? Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? They made a fuss over this man. But when the poor man entered to the assembly, amen, amen, how can I say it? Well, no one really, uh, even worse, cared, amen, but they mistreated him. First of all, don't, you, don't even sit down. Uh, uh, stand over there. Stand over there, you understand? And don't you sit on that window seat. You old or whatever, they treated him that way. And James said, here's the question, here's the question. James said in this situation, haven't you sh shown partiality among yourselves and become judges of evil thoughts? You understand? You see, to favor the rich, amen, over the poor, it has a deep, how can I say, carnality uh, 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 to, to spirituality, to the Christian. And, and, and their evil thoughts, were evident uh, through their unfair action. Because if a, per if a person is partial, they're unfair. You're unfair. You're treating people unfair, you see. And, and, and you see, to show partiality it is to show that uh, we care more about the outside, the outward appearance, than we do about the heart. First Samuel 16, it tells us that the Lord does not do what? See, man, you know, from the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart to show partiality. Amen. And that is you looking at the heart. That we misunderstand 
Amen. Who, who is in charge? Who is important? What is important? Amen. And who is blessed? That is in the sight of God. You understand? Now, there's two kinds of people. There's some people who go after wealth. And guess what? There's some people who can sit right there and wealth will come right to them. Right to them. I had a roommate when I was in the service during the Vietnam War. And um, he, he would show me his family. He said, my daddy owned 18, 18 wheels. I said, 18, 18? He said, most people can't own one. What do they do? Well, they move stuff, uh, Radio Shack. They used to have a Radio Shack. Y'all remember that? I think they, they, they discontinued that. So, so he had all kind of money. He came to me one day and said, my daddy don't like black people, and I want you to go home with me just to make him mad. <laughs> He's so partial. Just can't stand him. You understand? You see, he talks about him. And I said, why would he do that? He said, because he don't like you, like him, and he shows partiality between the family, between everybody. I said, well, no, I can't go home with you. So according to what you said, your daddy going to kill me. I mean, I ain't crazy now. I ain't going home. Ain't nobody catching no buses or nothing like that and going home with you. But people are partial. And when they're partial, they're going to do what? Show it. They're going to show it. You're going to show it. You understand. Show it. Then uh, uh, he, he said that God looks at what? The heart. We look at the outside of man. That's what he says, and that is true, believe it or not. You see, you see, only because you see a person with gold, you assume things. See him riding in a Lamborghini. They could have stolen. They could have what? Could have, could, have, could have killed somebody and got it. You don't care. No, no, you don't care. You go about what you see. Am I right? But you don't care about what's on the inside. That's what my daddy says about jealous people. He said, you can work 12 hours and forget what you get. And somebody will come along and be jealous of you. And they don't know how many hours you had to work to get it. They don't care. Am I right? You could have killed somebody to get it. Stole somebody. You could have pushed Big Mama down the stairs to get it. They don't care. Because of what, what, what they see. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? A whole lot of women got messed up like that, too. They saw a man driving a new car. I need to leave that. You got real messed up at what you saw. Looking at the hair, the gingerbread skin, we ain't going to deal with that up. But the thing about it is, you better watch what's on the outside. Some people have an outside religion. Because all what they care about is what happened on the, in, on the outside and they're shouting all of that. But what about that is the inside? Help me, somebody. You need not an outside religion, but you need an inside religion. Because God only cares about what? The heart, sister. It's your heart. You up there claim you crying and shouting, and then you go to blue to the Blue Goose Club or whatever it is. People are not. They're going to check out your outside. But if you had something in your heart that could control you, it would make a difference, believe it or not. Am I right? And we know we're going to be blessed, you understand, you see. And it's very important to know, amen, that God puts value on what's on the inside of you. And if you think poor people are not going to be blessed, they are. Then, then, then to show partiality is also uh, uh, evidence. Uh, that you're a selfish person. Amen. You see, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You said that uh, rich man, he's going to do some favors for me. Amen. He, he's going to do that, you see. Because he's rich. He's a rich man. He's going to help me. He's going to co-sign and sign for me. But that poor man, he can't do nothing that is for me. If he's saved, he can pray for you. He can pray you too. That's what I'm talking about, you see. Uh, stop worrying about what it, the Joneses have. You understand? That, that, that makes, it, it don't make any sense. It really, really don't. Don't worry about being rich, rich. What about the man that laid at the gate? And Peter had to tell him, he said, I want some money. He said, silver and gold I don't have. 
for what such as, as I do have, I'm going to give to you. And guess what? They touched his body and prayed for him, and he jumped up shouting. And guess what? He probably never needed to beg no more because they had something that went beyond money. Money, believe it or not. And in our daily life, we got to be careful. You understand? And in the church, we must be fair with everybody. Amen. One group, amen. One group cannot favor another group. It has to be unity. Amen. You see, how many of y'all know what I'm saying? What I'm talking about. Don't look at things from your point of view. Look at it from God's point of view. You're looking at it in the natural. But God is supernatural. So you have to look at it in his point of, from his point of view. Amen. You see, you have to do that. Amen. Now, what are we doing? Are we ab avoiding the sinful partiality? Amen. In the beginning, that is of our, this is the beginning of our black history. And God warns us. He said, don't judge and evaluate people by what you see, the gold, the shoes that they're wearing, and all of this, you understand. People tell me all the time, so-and-so and so got moved up. Ooh, they're making over $200,000 a year. God did that. God did that, man. God, and you know what I learned about God? Just as he gives it to you, he can take it away, too. He can snatch that rascal away, and you'll have nothing. That's the way he works, you understand. His mathematical system is different from ours, you understand. He adds to subtract, and he has to subtract sometimes, just to add. That's the way my God works. I don't, know, I don't know about you all. So you need to stop treating people one different from the other, one set different from the other, you understand. Y'all remember uh, in the Bible, uh, 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 they had uh, Cephas and Paul and all of them, and then they had the preachers and all of them, and they say, well, some, some of them say, I like Paul preaching. I like Cephas uh, preaching, you understand? And Paul had to tell them, amen, that, that God helped us to dig up the ground, but you got to understand that one plants, one waters, but only God gives the increase. You've got to understand that. If you don't understand that, you understand. God has blessed some of us immensely, and we're still not happy. We still are not happy, believe it or not. You see, and you don't have to judge and evaluate a person, you understand, and put a little value here and a lot of value on another one, you understand. God is warning, and he prohibited partiality. Amen. You see, don't bring an attitude to the table of evaluating everybody. You can't sit beside somebody that's got on a $30,000 Rolex watch and become rich. It don't work that way. Well, I know them. You understand? I know them and, and this and that and the other. You can't do that. It's not going to happen. Amen. Where they live, we appreciate where they live and all of that. You understand? But you have to watch God. He uses a word instead of being partial. It's a word called honor. honor. Am I right? Honor. Honor the position that I give. Honor, honor, that's very important. Somebody say, well, uh, I don't even honor the position. God gave my mama and daddy a position of honor. He said, honor your mama? But he told me, I don't know about y'all, and honor your father. And I see children doing crazy things. To their daddy and their mama and to the church and everything else. And it's happening. It really, really is. You see? Honor, he said. You understand? God said that honor holds that position, believe it or not, together. Amen. God said you're supposed to honor. They should honor. He said, uh, how did he say it? He said, uh, give honor to whom it is due. That's what he said. You understand? But now listen, God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich. Not with gold ring, but rich in the faith. Rich in the faith. I know some folk that ain't hardly got nothing, but they got more faith. They just step out there on nothing and believe that something is there. Amen. You see, God has that love and that compassion for those who are rich, rich in the faith, and not just for the riches of this world. 
you. Poor folks will always do what? They're going to always be with you. With you. Always going to be somebody you're going to have to give something. You're going to have to help them out with their children or whatever. Y'all may as well say amen. Amen. You see, we've fallen short. Yes, we have. We've fallen short. And today, and today the, uh, God's expectation is for us to do what? Evaluate yourself and stop being partial. Stop being, stop being partial. You understand? If you stop being partial, God can bless you. Evaluate people solely and quickly. Stop doing this on their appearance and what they have. You understand? Oh, you can't go over there. You can't sit over there. You understand? Uh, 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 Mr. Big Shot sit over there. I'm sitting over here and I'm going to eat my food. And I ain't studying about no Mr. Big Shot. If you drink him and eat him every day and, and you just hang him around your neck, that's your business. You understand? I think, Mr. Big Shot, y'all ought to stop showing so much partiality. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, you see, you have to be careful to understand. You see, you see, you, you become a, a judge. And it's based on what? Your twisted thinking. We got so many twisted thinking people that you see in this world. And I say, Lord, have mercy. You understand? And then you reject what? The poor God has chosen. If God wants to choose somebody to be a minister, they don't have to be wearing a gold ring. No, they don't. He can go to the ghettos of the ghetto, the slums of the slums. He can save people, and they can be some of the best preachers in the world. But we need to stop showing what? Partiality. Stop showing partiality. Stop talking down on people. Amen. You know what I mean? I built a house, and guess what people tell, have told me? Why didn't you build your house in Bloomfield here? Why would you build a house like this right here? Don't you think that's kind of stupid? How you going to tell me where to build a house, and it's my land? And then what are you saying about my community? You need to leave here and go somewhere else. Are you stupid? But that's the way we are. We always showing partiality. And I don't know why you do it. It's in your family. It's everywhere. And you can't get rid of it until you give your heart to the Lord. I mean, so solely give your heart to the Lord. One thing I found out now about riches, you understand? One thing I found out about riches, the richer you are, you understand, I believe that God wants you to do what? Give. He wants you to be a giver. Giving is what? One of the spiritual what? Gifts in the Bible. Giving. Y'all didn't know that? Giving is a spiritual gift. If you give, you're going to be blessed every time. Every time you're going to be blessed. I've seen kids shriveling at the bus stop. Uh, uh, you know, here in Detroit, I just stopped and handed them a $10 bill. They stopped shibbling right away. There's no lie. They ain't shibbling nothing. They said, oh my God, why did he just drop, just drop it on? I said, that kid, they, they don't need to be standing out here in the cold. I just wish that mom and dad had a car or something. Oh, they would think more of them. If you give, you ain't going to stop nobody from being blessed. Being blessed. I guarantee you, you won't stop. And the only reason why you have not been blessed is you, you have not read it. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. But listen to the first part. If you give, you're going to be blessed, blessed, blessed. Is it money all the time? No, it's healing sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's a blessing of healing. You understand? You see, it's healing. The blessing that God gives that you know not of, and there's always an unforeseen, unanswered blessing, God's going to drop on you. I don't care how much they don't like you. <laughs> That's them. That's on them. I don't care how much that they're trying to block your blessing. That's on them. But God is still going to be in the blessing business. Thank you. Will you please stand at this time? And we're going to pray. Would you like to come to the altar?
pray. Have you seen partiality any way around? If, if so, you need to come and pray for it. Do you have it in your heart? I meet so many partial people until I wonder, I want to ask why sometimes. Why? Why? They integrated the school. This is black history, everybody out there. Uh, they integrated my high school. And some of the uh, culture, there was a culture in town that didn't want us to go to school with them. But finally, the decree was sent down and we had to integrate the school. And my brother said this, I don't feel good here. Because I see so much partiality. You understand? How can I feel good, he said, in a place where there's just so much hate, prejudice, and partiality? How can you go to a church whereby it ain't nothing but relationship? That's all it is. Ain't no church, no relationship. This one claimed they're talking about this one and that. My daddy, my mom. You can't do that, yo. That's partiality. And it's not going to work. You blocking your own blessing. And you blocking the church's blessing. People are toxic for shout. But you see it all the time. Lord have mercy. God is good, isn't it? He's a blessing over and over again. And let me say this, you didn't have to live down uh, south 40 years ago to see it. It's still around. That monster called prejudice will raise his ugly head wherever you are. Gonna happen. Don't be telling me about it. It ain't going to happen. It's going to happen. And it's happening somewhere right now. Father, we thank you for this message that says we don't have to be partial against one another, but we can love one another. We can unite with one another. We can have the agape love. Lord, we just ask that you would bless us as we, as we continue, Lord, to live for you. And that we, our prayer is, is that partiality will not be a part of us. Let me leave you with this. Partiality is sin. That's what it is. And it brews and it forms everywhere, and the people will allow it to happen. God, continue to bless us. Don't let us show a difference. That is between one another. Let us love one another. Let us be on one accord. We talk the talk, but we can't walk the walk. Help us to walk this walk. Everybody's just so partial and so against one another. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's their fault. No, you're too partial. You even got family folk that show so much partiality. You're afraid to sit them down and just talk with them. I'd have to go out to call, go out and have some coffee with them every night. But we thank you, Lord. Bless us. Continue to be with us. Touch us, Lord. And touch us with a spirit that of love, whereby we will not evaluate people. We will not evaluate the outside, but it's what's on the inside. Bless us now. We go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for that word that you gave to us on this morning.